breaking news. Beijing has just launched something that feels ripped straight out of science fiction. The world's very first robot Olympics, officially named the World Humanoid Robot Games. Humanoids are sprinting, boxing, and even sorting medical supplies. 26 events, 500 plus robots, 16 countries across three days. And it's only day one. Some robots move with surprising agility. Others stumble, collapse, and create hilarious blooper reels. But behind the spectacle lies something far more serious, a race for technological dominance. The winner here isn't just a robot. It's a nation signaling who leads the 21st century workforce and who writes the rulebook for how humans and machines will share work. Is this just futuristic entertainment? Or is it the first glimpse of a world where robots could replace humans not only in work, but in sports, creativity, and even global competition? By the end of this video, you'll see why this event is being called the Olympics of the future and why experts believe it could change the trajectory of robotics forever. Stay tuned. Because what's happening in Beijing right now isn't just a sports event, it's a geopolitical game changer. Whoever turns spectacle into dependable services first will shape wages, safety standards, and the pace of innovation for years. 1. The Secret Origins of the Robot Olympics The idea of robots competing in sports has fascinated people for decades. Early contests were small and academic from robot soccer leagues at universities, to drone races, to DARPA challenges that asked machines to drive, navigate, or perform disaster tasks. They were interesting, but limited, controlled, predictable, and focused on research milestones rather than public competition. The audiences were lab teams and enthusiasts, not spectators buying tickets and posting highlight reels. Quick Delta check. Compared with RoboCup or DARPA trials, this is on a different level. Ticketed Spectators, a multi-event program under one roof. Practical challenges like medicine sorting and cleaning, not just football matches. And crucially, a public stage where trial and error is part of the show. Bottom line, fewer rehearsed demos, more chaos in real time, and far more data on how machines behave when the world refuses to cooperate. On August 15th, 2020, the World Humanoid Robot Games officially began. More than 280 teams from 16 countries brought over 500 humanoid robots to Beijing. Held at the National Speed Skating Oval, a former Winter Olympics venue, the event ran three days, August 15th, 17. Tickets ranged from 128 to 580 yuan, proof that people are willing to pay to watch machines compete and, just as importantly, to see them fail and recover. The moment you put robots in front of a live crowd, expectations change and to judge robots like athletes. How fast, how coordinated, how resilient under pressure. Why sports? Because sports test robots in ways labs cannot. Unpredictability, physical contact, split second coordination. Sports compress everything that's hard about the real world into a short emotional spectacle. Robots that succeed here are closer to real world utility than ever before. They must perceive, decide, and act while surrounded by moving opponents, erratic bounces, and the constant risk of falling. Success is not a perfect routine. It is recovering when things go wrong and finishing the task anyway. If you had to pick one event, sprint, soccer, or boxing, which exposes the real limits of robots? Think about it, because each answer says something about what you expect machines to master first. Speed reveals control. Soccer reveals teamwork and perception. Boxing reveals balance, force modulation, and safe contact. Each challenge maps to real jobs, delivery, coordination on factory floors, and dexterous assistance in crowded spaces. China's choice to host the first robot Olympics wasn't random. Like 2008, it signals ambition, lead in AI and robotics, and set the narrative for the next decade. Two, inside the machines, what makes these robots different? The Robot Olympics spans 26 events. Sprints, middle distance runs, football, boxing, table tennis, gymnastics, weightlifting, basketball free throws, obstacle courses, even cleaning trials and medicine sorting. The mix matters. Classic athletics, stress balance, speed and power. The practical tasks stress dexterity, precision and reliability. Together, they form a fuller exam for general purpose humanoids. The robots aren't simple machines, they're powered by advanced computer vision to map the world in real time, reinforcement learning to adapt strategies, 
and actuators that mimic muscles to produce smooth motion. Onboard processors minimize latency so decisions happen instantly without cloud delay. A robot that must choose to recover, pass, or shoot cannot wait a half second for a server to reply. It must decide now. Impressive feats grabbed headlines. The Unitree H1 finished the 1,500 meters in about 6 minutes and 34 seconds. That's far slower than elite human athletes, but astonishing for humanoids coping with balance, cadence, and energy on two legs. Impressive, but here's the twist. Speed isn't the headline. Recovery and autonomy are. Watch what happens when they fall. That's the true breakthrough. A quick stand-up is worth more than extra strides. Some robots coordinated in soccer, passing balls with surprising precision and repositioning without colliding. Boxing matches were slower than humans but showed resilience with controlled contact and attempts to maintain guard after light impacts. Many robots tumbled. Some needed human resets, others self-corrected and kept going. Those differences reveal maturity. Autonomy is a spectrum measured in recovery time and stable task completion. Myth. Robots now match human Olympic speed. Reality, they don't and won't soon. The fastest times are nowhere close, but balance recovery, reflexes, and self-corrections, that's what matters for everyday usefulness. One event quietly tested something scarier than speed, handoff reliability. Drop the object in sport and you lose points. Drop it in the real world and you risk a hospital error or a warehouse accident. Reliability under pressure is the dividing line between a cool demo and a deployable worker. Metric of progress. Forget sprint times. The stat to follow is time to recovery after a fall. Today it takes seconds. Next year it could be instant. Recovery measured in fractions of a second unlocks safer contact, fewer operator interventions, and smoother teamwork. When recovery approaches, blink and you miss it, humanoids begin to feel inevitable. 3. From stadium to your life, why this matters more than you think. Why does any of this matter? Because the skills trained in sport are transferable everywhere. Sports aren't a detour. They are a compressed training ground for chaotic reality. If it works in an arena, it can work on a hospital floor, a busy street, or a warehouse. Healthcare. Reflexes sharpened in soccer could support surgeons and nurses. Balance training from boxing-like drills can prevent robots dropping equipment in crowded corridors. Reliability in handoffs isn't glamorous, but it's the difference between a tool that helps and a risk you cannot ensure. Imagine a robot delivering medication carts that never collide, never tire, and never miss a room. Warehousing. Obstacle agility becomes safe navigation in aisles. With safety layers, humanoids can take repetitive, injury-prone tasks and improve each shift. Elderly care. Robots trained to avoid collisions on tracks could help prevent falls at home. They could provide mobility support, guidance on stairs, and gentle assistance rising from chairs or beds. Companionship also means reliable presence, reminders, and safe support. Search and rescue. Endurance tests show how long robots can operate. In disaster zones, that means hours of work while carrying survivors or navigating rubble. Self-correction matters more than speed. Quick recovery beats sprinting, then failing. Military and defense. Team coordination in soccer equals formation strategy in defense. Dual use is unavoidable. The same teamwork algorithm that scores a goal can secure a perimeter or coordinate patrols. That demands serious governance and accountability because the edge that wins in sports can escalate stakes elsewhere. Here's the part everyone is missing. This isn't about robots taking medals, it's about stress testing future coworkers. Bottom line, sports today, service jobs tomorrow. If you're building with robotics or AI vision, the next section will save months of trial and error because it's about the one issue that can stall adoption even when the demo looks perfect. Four, the experts are divided, hope or hype. Experts call this the space race of our century. Instead of rockets, humanoids. Instead of the moon, the workplace. That analogy isn't hype, it's economics. The country that scales reliable humanoids doesn't just win medals. It raises productivity, lowers injury rates, and unlocks new services that were uneconomical with human-only workflows. Tesla, Boston Dynamics, and Unitree are watching. A 30-second clip can move cap tables. Markets price working demos, recovery speed, safe contact, consistent performance. Economists warn these demos accelerate automation. Policymakers ask, 
Who's liable when autonomy fails? Vendor, integrator, or facility? Here's the part everyone is missing. The games are a data goldmine. Every slip and recovery logs terabytes of motion and control data. Investors and governments know it. Whoever can turn chaos footage into better controllers and safer behaviors the fastest will lap the field. That requires pipelines. Capture, label, simulate, deploy, repeat. The winners won't just have better robots, they'll have better learning loops. Dual use is unavoidable, so standards and reporting must arrive before scale. So, what recap? Impact is immediate. Adoption could arrive within a decade. Risk and liability are already procurement issues. Expect contracts to demand auditable logs, fall recovery thresholds, and clear responsibility in mixed human-robot teams. Bottom line, this is economic power and national influence. Five, the future nobody's ready for, so what's next? Expect an annual event, faster robots, and bigger datasets. The spectacle grows, but the real action is data engines turning chaos into competence. Each fall and sprint produces data to refine AI models. Iteration will happen faster than ever. Sports as evolution. Watch the metric of progress, time to recovery after a fall. As it falls toward instant, everything else compounds. Safety, productivity, and public trust. In daily life, advances move from stadium to street. Within a decade, humanoids could deliver packages, assist the elderly, stock shelves, and respond to emergencies. Geopolitically, expect a robotics race. Nations that balance ambition with safety will set the norms. It isn't about speed, it's coordination. Replace friction with flow and you redesign supply chains, hospitals, and cities. Bottom line, what we saw in Beijing is a preview of a society where humans and machines share the stage as teammates, competitors, and maybe rivals. The question isn't if, it's how fast, how safe, and who leads. So there you have it. The world's first robot Olympics is underway in Beijing. Some see entertainment, others see power projection. One truth is clear, the line between human and machine is blurring fast and the scoreboard is public. Will robots replace humans in sports? Will they work in our homes? Or will they redefine humanity's role in competition and labor? These aren't questions for the future, they're questions for today. The answers depend on recovery times, reliability under pressure, and whether we build the right guardrails before scale arrives. Don't get left behind. Subscribe, hit the bell, and join us as we track every AI and robotics breakthrough. Comment below, would you watch the Robot Olympics every year? Would you welcome a humanoid robot into your daily life? Tomorrow, who actually won the games and why the winners weren't the fastest? Stay tuned, because the future isn't coming. It's already here. In our next upload, we'll unpack the winning designs and what they reveal about the road to safe autonomy.